Well, presidential hopefuls are pounding the pavement in Iowa and New Hampshire, trying to craft the perfect response to woo voters in 2016. And appealing to women is proving to be somewhat of a challenge, even for candidates who seem like they had the female vote all sewn up. Hillary Clinton's support from women is beginning to slide. In fact, according to a Monmouth University poll, the Democratic frontrunner's biggest opponent, Bernie Sanders, has skated ahead of her among women voters 42% to 38 So will this trend continue and how is Sanders faring on issues important to women overall? Well, joining me now to discuss are some of Bernie's biggest female supporters, Pat Downs and Anoa Chonga from the organisation Women for Bernie Sanders. So welcome both of you. Thanks for being with us today. Thanks for having us. Uh, so Pat, I'll start with you. I mean, you're one of the co-founders of the organisation. What inspired you to start it? Well, um, you know, I can't speak for every woman because uh, women for Bernie speak for themselves. But for me, uh, I fully expected to vote for a woman for president this time. And once I heard that Bernie Sanders was uh, running, I took a deep dive into his record and fell in love. Um, he's a true public servant. Uh, very rare. Uh, perhaps not in my lifetime have we seen someone like Bernie Sanders. Uh, I spent many years in libraries building partnerships, uh, trying to leverage resources for the uh, disadvantaged. And so when I saw a, a public servant running, a true public servant, uh, somebody like Bernie, you know, they, they say the indicator of what you'll do tomorrow is what you've done uh, yesterday for the rest of your life. And so I, I trust uh, Bernie Sanders. And uh, we know that both he and Secretary Clinton will do well and fight hard for women's rights. But uh, who of those two will stop fracking? Who will um, stop uh, the TPP from going through? Who's going to walk in the I think they're excellent points you're raising, and I, I want to uh, I want to pick those up with you. But we're going to get you on the phone, so you're going to get a, a call from our control room just because your audio is coming kind of in and out. Uh, so wait for that call. And Chonga, you know, let's let's pick up where uh, Pat just left off in terms of uh, what appeals to you about Bernie that doesn't necessarily appeal to you about Hillary Clinton. Well, I think for many of us, it's not an issue of either or. It's it's we're faced with a situation where we are able to embrace a candidate that represents you know, all the different facets of our moral fiber or our personality. I don't like to have to choose one part of myself when when deciding to align with someone. Um, my father actually has been a big Bernie fan for years now. And uh, with the rumors of him entering the race, he, he began to talk about it. So I began to, to research and look more. And then I stumbled upon the Women for Bernie group and became involved as a state uh, page administrator trying to just raise aware, more awareness. But with Bernie, Bernie, of course, Bernie hits on all the major topics that we think of as being traditional women's issues, um, notably a uh, recent uh, co-sponsorship of the Cardin Kirk resolution to ratify the ERA. I mean, the gender pay gap is clear evidence of why we need better protection for women. But at the same time, Bernie's uh, platform on economic justice issues, racial justice, those things appeal to me as well because, you know, the intersectionality in our and our identities, um, I'm, as a black woman, having been a single working mother, um, concerns with childcare, healthcare, um, sick leave, those other facets of Bernie's overall proposal and plan, you know, they, they help make him a more well-rounded candidate, I think, for my own personal uh, political belief and moral code. You know, it's interesting, so you know, that particularly, and uh, yeah, I know it's interesting when you, particularly when you're talking about, you know, how Bernie is perhaps resonating with uh, the black community as well, because I think for a, a lot of people, uh, the Clintons uh, have sort of, you know, had uh, the the black vote, as it were, for you know, sewn up, locked in, however you want to phrase it, for such a long time uh, that some people were concerned about how Bernie was actually being able to respond to it. Of course, you know, there was that infamous moment earlier uh, this year. Right. With the Black Lives Matter movement, where he sort of just didn't seem to kind of get it right. Do you think that he has what it takes to actually appeal to some of those voters that seem well, to be a more well, forceful? Even though this is a little, yeah, going a little off topic just for a hot second, I was just on Twitter earlier today and I saw a tweet from, um, you know, big activist D Ray about a meeting, a sit down that Bernie actually had with several Black Lives Matter activists today um, talking about Campaign Zero, which was recently. 
uh, rolled out, as well as his racial justice platform. So what I think with Bernie, I don't think it was an issue of he maybe necessarily didn't get it right, but I think, you know, in those initial phases when you're starting something, like Bernie doesn't have, he's relying on the people. He's, he's listening to people on the ground to kind of help him shape. I mean, he knows what he wants to do. He knows what his vision is. But at the same time, he's open up to listen to people. He doesn't have corporate sponsorship kind of feeding him what the messaging needs to be. So I think through that process, it allowed the campaign to learn, okay, maybe we need to tweak some things here and there. Because prior to that happening, even though maybe that certain group was not at the table, Bernie had already been speaking with people like Dr. Cornell was. You know, he already has a rapport with the NAACP. So... Um, he's he has high ratings going back to women's issues for Rao, you know, now. So Bernie already has this broad coalition of support out there, kind of. But he doesn't have the name brand recognition within many communities like the Clintons do. We all have a nostalgia of the 90s for various reasons. But in 2015, we do not have the luxury of nostalgia. We have to really get down to the nitty gritty, so to speak, of the issues that are mattering to us. I mean, we're, we're climbing out of you know, the financial chaos of 2008. And even though the economy seems to be doing better, so many families, so many workers, so many individuals are just not really feeling the boom like industry has. And that's where Bernie Sanders seems to come in. And we are trying to work to educate people on the local level so that we can build up that support state by state, city by city. Yeah, I mean, Pat, in terms of actually being able to galvanize that support, of course, you know, I think uh, Chonga made a really excellent point, which is that there is kind of a money machine behind Hillary Clinton. Uh, you know, and Bernie Sanders, of course, has proved uh, to be formidable when it comes to fundraising, particularly sort of small dollar amounts. Uh, you know, I think he's broken records when it comes to that. Uh, but do you think he is going to end up having the kind of financial backing that he'll need if he is going to take on Hillary Clinton and, and really succeed in becoming the primary candidate? Oh, I think he's already showing that. Can you hear me? Yeah, absolutely. We can hear you perfectly. Good. Good. Uh, oh, I think he's already showing that. Um, I mean, he's he's got people already making videos for him. What does he need a campaign ad to, to make a professional commercial for himself? People are doing it for free. He's got volunteers. He's got what money can't buy. He's got loyalty. He's got hundreds of thousands of people organizing. Our, our organization has grown from one Facebook page, which we started, uh, to all social media formats, and now um, Facebook pages in almost every state, and people behind those pages who are organizing and uh, getting involved in their communities. So absolutely, um, you know, you don't see that on very many other campaigns. So talk to me specifically about Bernie's issues. Where do you see him differing from Hillary Clinton that you're like, yeah, absolutely, that's why I'd vote for Bernie instead of Hillary Clinton? Well, um, again, I, I'm not sure what you could hear when I first started, but, um, you know, he's he's going to do well on the women's issues. He gets 100% in our all, and, uh, and uh, he always has worked for women, um, but, you know, who, who is uh, going to get rid of private prisons? Who is going to get, most importantly, rid of corporate money in uh, politics? Um, the one guy who is not taking it. So when you, you know, we're, women are not single-issue voters. Uh, women uh, look at their whole family. I think I know a, was uh, talking about that earlier. They look at their whole family, their whole lives, their whole experience, and um, they say, you know, who's the best? Hopefully they're going to uh, vote for the, their best interests, and I have to say for me, um, that's Bernie Sanders. Interesting. And I'm glad you brought up the fact that women are not just single voter, um, you know, we're not just a single voter kind of issue based uh, block, I would say, because I think people uh, and, you know, Mark Udall made that mistake in, in Colorado for sort of focusing so much on, on personhood and not actually sort of broadening his platform. I think that that was that was one of his downfalls. And, and ironically, then the personhood amendment uh, was shot down, but he didn't actually get elected into office, uh, even though he was crying out the ha uh, hardest and loudest against that specific issue. So I think that's an interesting point. I've got a couple of comments here. Harring Toler says Bernie is not demonizing anyone. He is saying that the ultra rich and companies making huge profits need 
need to bring jobs back home and pay a tax that percentage-wise is similar to what is paid by less profitable individuals who are trying to raise families. He is not only a women's issue guy, he has all of the issues that the country needs to concern itself with on his platform, environment, crime exactly. and prisons, immigration, etc. He takes money from private industrial prisons. I mean... Well, so we, uh, we've, we're running out of time with you guys, unfortunately, but I know I just want to give you a final word then. In terms of issues specifically, kind of I'll go to you again with the same question. What issue do you think that Bernie okay. is, is winning on for you that you think that Hillary Clinton just isn't? For me, it's his economic justice focus. While everything else dovetails very nicely, um, having been a single working mother, having been a single mother uh, relying on food stamps and child care assistance, knowing that struggle. Because for me, it's not about, oh, I'm going to vote for the woman. I don't have the luxury of voting for a woman because I'm a woman. I need the person that's going to make decisions and enact policy that's going to help people who are like me without those programs, without those benefits and assistance. I would have never made it through undergrad, grad school, or law school. So there are women like me who are out there struggling, really trying to work hard. Single, single parents, we're not the bane of American society. It's not because of us that, that things are going bad. But we do work very hard to make sure that our children and our families are well taken care of. And Bernie seems to have a better plan and a better history of making sure that happened. So for me, it's not because I don't like Hillary. I'm a 90s kid, you know, great nostalgia, all that other good stuff. But it's time to give people a chance based on what they can do, not who they are.